I will say it is odd that I assume it's a Geiger counter that's actively trying to figure out if there's a nuke nearby. Would that not have been triggered immediately? The guy activates the bomb, you know, he puts the trigger in there, but wouldn't you already be able to detect the radioactivity? Yeah, no, of a like, bomb? without a doubt. You absolutely would. You'd be Regardless able to, like, of shield, pinpoint it. right? Yeah. Like, even <laughs> if that, that thing was made of lead. Back in the 60s, they would have already had the technology to identify that material based on its radio wave signature. So, so like, like, it works for the plot, you know, it's like, it okay, does. We, we need to pretend to pass out so that they're comfortable enough to bring in the bomb, and then when they activate it, once they turn on the radioactivity and it activates the Geiger counter, then, you know, we'll move in. But yeah, uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe totally it's ruining the movie completely and yeah. making it inferior to From Russia with Love. <laughs> Did ah, it, uh, the up, Fuck Charlie. Me. I think it's a fun <laughs> plot, honestly. I want to acknowledge your point about why, like, if I was going to give From Russia with Love, if I was going to rate it higher, the, higher, the reason why I would do that is because the relationship between Bond and Goldfinger doesn't feel as good as it does between Bond and Grant in terms of like the classiness. Bond doesn't get gold. Bob, he's like, that guy's a fucking clown. He's a smart clown. He's a dangerous clown, but he's a fucking clown ass, douchey, rich boy, dumbass dude. Like Bond does not respect Goldfinger in the same way. There's yeah. a mutual respect with Red. Yeah. Correct. They understand um, each other. Correct. Nans is hundred. Yeah, Nans nailed it. I don't think Bond has that for Goldfinger. But he does at All one right. point, and I will say that's the key moment for the film Goldfinger. Is that moment where Bond goes, "Man, I j I thought you were a, c but now I see you're a fucking genius. You're not going in there to steal the gold." Right. You're going in there to destroy the gold. Now, at the most, you're going to have two hours before the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines move in and make you put it back. Who mentioned anything about removing it? I apologize, Goldfinger. You know, last couple episodes, I've talked about Richard Baybaum. And, you know, some people would say, like, I don't really care who wrote the film, but I want to give Richard Baybaum credit because in the book version, Goldfinger steals the gold. But in the movie, Baybaum's like, you could never do that. It would take weeks to do because there's that much gold. He fixed a plot hole in the movie and he said instead of him stealing it, how about he just destroys it? That is brilliant. And it really is. Yeah. That is the key yeah. moment to the film because the whole moment with the gangsters in the scene where he's telling them about the heist, that's a comedic scene. I laughed my ass off the whole time. Every line of dialogue is, why is that coming out of the ground? What are these lights? <laughs> Turn those lights back on. <laughs> What's this? What's about that trick pool tape? Come right here. Hey, cover those doors. Turn those lights back on. What are you trying to pull, Goldfinger? Yeah, I don't like being cooped up like this. What's that map doing there? Hey, what's going on here? What is it? Hey, on the floor, my right thing. Hey, what is this? America, around. Hey, they closed up the fire. Hey, what's going on? 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 Hey, what's Farcical, and those guys are like out of a Mel yeah. Brooks movie. Right? What, what's going on? Say hi. Yeah. Ah, hi. What's this? Yeah. It's setting up the typical bad guy plot, right? We're gonna go steal a bunch of money. Bond himself, he's like, ah, eh, they're just gonna steal a bunch of money. Like, who gives a? F when he realizes it's we're gonna destroy the gold, Bond's like, hey, this movie's pretty good. <laughs> like, Bond himself <laughs> confirms that. And I just want to submit one question because this has always kind of confused me. Bond's like, that would make the gold radioactive. But we're yeah. talking about detonating a nuke. Would yeah. detonating a nuke destroy all of that gold? No. That's what I was thinking. Well, it, or it wouldn't doesn't... just explode gold all well, over the place? It would melt the gold, but it doesn't matter. You can't get to the gold if it's extremely radioactive. Yeah, that, that was really what gold. it was. But, but it's not, it's not like you melt the gold. But it's not like you wait 60 years and, and you're going to find a bunch of bullion blocks. Look at Chernobyl. Okay. No, Is yeah, there it, gold in Chernobyl? No, but the, the radioactive... <laughs> there was no explosion in Chernobyl. with Chernobyl. Was there gold in there Chernobyl? Was, no. Yeah, there correct was. me if I was I wrong. Think, was, there, was, there, was there an explosion? Yes, there was. There absolutely was. Yes, there I, thought, was I thought it was like a leak. Chernobyl. I thought it was, was a leak. It would be radioactive for 2,000 years. Regardless, regardless if it's radioactive or not, I believe you could correct me if anybody is a nuclear physicist and knows anything about nuclear weapons, chime in. But I believe a nuclear weapon, if you have not seen photos of people basically like on walls as far as their outline goes it 
fucking vaporizes you. A atomic bomb is that powerful. That's so what I'm the saying. The gold that itself would be bomb, vaporized. The gold and, no, would it's, not I think exist. It's, well, if you exploded in Fort Knox, the entire gold supply of United States would be radioactive for 57 years. 58 to be exact. I apologize, Goldfinger. It's an inspired deal. 